Hi, I'm Andrea Cuny from the Cuny team at Ansley Real Estate in Atlanta. And today I'm talking with Scott Cutter from Costa Rica, who owns um, one of the brokerage firms, the best brokerage firm, right, Scott, um, in Costa Rica. Uh, and is going to talk to us just a little bit about the market there and his experience of relocating there and um, give us the inside scoop on real estate. Well, it's so nice to be here with you, Andrea. It's a pleasure to connect with people from Atlanta. I'm originally from the Birmingham, Alabama area, so I got roots in that in that right. region. It's always great. Yeah, love it. Awesome. Um, to give you guys a little bit of background on 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 me, I grew up in Birmingham. I went to school out in Boulder, Colorado, and came down to Costa Rica on a six week vacation, which was about 28 years ago. On the six week vacation, got extended and extended. Um, I've been living here in the Manuel Antonio area, which is on the central Pacific coast of Costa Rica for the last 28 years. My wife, I've got two teenage daughters that I've, I've almost done, uh, at least raising, one at 16 and one at 19, who's now in New York. And my brother and I are partners. My brother moved down here as well. We're partners in two Costa Rica real estate. We have uh, eight offices around the country, 45 agents. We, we cover most of the Costa Rican market. We're one of the few agencies here that actually gives a kind of nationwide coverage as opposed to being just kind of focused on one area. We're really honored to be in Realm, this is how I met you, and 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 be the Board of Regents members for Who's Who and Loves Your Real Estate here. But it's just a pleasure. We get to live in a really amazing country. We do things with a lot of passion. It's exciting to share it with people like you. So exciting. So part of my purpose on this was just as we got into Realm and and um, learn and meet more people. I really want to um, develop relationships across the globe with the best brokers. And so I know that in talking to friends, we come to Costa Rica a lot. We love it there. I'm going to call it Santa Teresa, but the way you say it is so much better. You did perfect. You sounded local. <laughs> we love it there uh, in Hermosa Beach. And, um, and so I reached out to you to do this because I know clients are going there. I, after talking to you in our initial call, it sounds like there's really some great opportunities to invest in real estate there. Um, and then on top of it, I know that you own a rental company as well. And so if our clients are coming to visit and maybe need to get plugged in that way to find a house, maybe there's an opportunity to get their introduction um, to Costa Rica through you on that platform. So Tell us, I think everybody wants to know why Costa Rica? Why do you think it's so great? And then what what's a what's a price point, an entry price point um, into Costa Rica? Well, the first part, well, both questions are actually pretty easy. We, what, there's a million reasons why Costa Rica is so special. Obviously, it is a stunningly beautiful place. It's less than one-tenth of 1% 1 of the world's land area, but we have like 5% of the world's biodiversity. You know, we're, it's an easy to get to place where right now we're on central time zone. We bounce between central and mountain. We don't, we don't, we don't have daylight savings time. It's six and six year round. Sun's up, sun's down. Um, but it's a really easy to get to place. Stunning, stunning natural beauty. It's got the longest standing democracy in Central America. You know, this is a country that abolished its army in 1949 and decided to spend all that money on healthcare and education. When you think about these tidy little Latin American countries with that foresight, to say, we're going to make people happy and healthy and well-educated. And it it's evidence in a lifestyle. One of the things that I tell a lot of people is I came here because of the kind of mesmerizing natural beauty. And that's, it's, it's really amazing. But you stay here and you come back here because the people in Costa Rica are happier. You know, it's one, that happiest place on the planet. When you come here and you know, you can see you smile. There's beautiful beaches all over the world. You know, and there's beautiful places all over the world. You don't get the same sense of well-being and happiness. And I think that's really, especially in this common, this complex world we're living in today, I think that sense of peace and gratitude and the, what we call the pura vida, pure life, is it's, it's impalpable, but incredibly palpable here. And I think that's what has the world really falling in love and wanting to come and experience it more and more. Um, in terms of entry level, We've got everything now from real luxury. It was, a, it was an emerging destination when I got here. Everything was rough around the edges. Everything was dirt cheap and it needed to be dirt cheap because it was, you know, I, I lived here for six years with no phone and it wasn't because I wanted to disconnect. There were no phones um, in some of these small towns and dirt roads. It's now, as you know, it's- Not a phone. I mean, there were phones in town, but like I would go to the phone place I'd like to get a phone line for my house. They said, we don't have any available PARs any available spaces in our system until we upgrade the system. And so this, you know, the, the, the country just kind of, the coastal areas especially, developed faster than even the infrastructure that could get to them 
because it was so beautiful. Um, when you think about Costa Rica, you know, I, I use this analogy a lot. You're a, you're a parent, I'm a parent. When I got here, I was an infant. So it was incredibly imperfect. Cried all night, pooped the pants. You know, but it was so beautiful and, and, and pure that it didn't matter all the headaches that come with the infant. Then we went through kind of a phase where it was like our teenage years. We weren't quite a full-blown global tourist destination. We still had infrastructural issues. You, you couldn't get the phone lines. You couldn't get cable. There wasn't good internet. There wasn't as good infrastructure out. And now we're really just starting to kind of come out of that teenage years, which, which can be awkward. And you'll hear people, old timers, oh, it's not the same as it used to be. No, it's not. It's evolved. And just like you, sometimes at least with my teenagers, you're like, sometimes you're like, did I mess up? Or are they going to be great parents? And, and we're in that phase where now Costa Rica is entering its kind of ecotourism adult life, but it's still very much an up and coming destination. There's, there's great deals here and you can still find very inexpensive real estate in here. You're not going to find dirt cheap beachfront property here in the prime tourism areas. Those are areas that are already in that kind of maturation. Any of our beach, like any, if you want to buy on the water in the States, you're spending a million bucks. So do you have, will you say affordable? Is that 850? Like what does a million dollars get you? Oh yeah. I mean, so the reality is in most of our coastal destinations, a million dollars will get you into either an ocean view or close to the proximity of the water, you know, ocean view, home, villa. You know the top our ultra, you know the top of our luxury market with a couple of anomaly exceptions is probably five to eight million dollars for single family and that's that's in the four seasons Papagayo on the golf course God's view of the world in the best most expensive resorts and yes there's an anomaly sale here and there but average luxury you know well in some of these luxury groups say Scott we want to feature one of your properties don't send us anything under four million dollars and I go hmm. What am I going to send? Because we don't have many homes priced over $4 million. So, you know, our luxury market in the real established areas for for brand new, state-of-the-art, stunning luxury estate homes is probably a million five to two and a half million dollars. And that's creme de la creme. 500000 a million dollars gets you nice stuff in almost every area. And if you go a little bit outside the epicenters, then that money goes incredibly long. So who's your buyer? Who's buying in Costa Rica right now? I'm sure that's changed over the years, but in the last couple of years, who's buying, would you say? Well, I mean, North America, I mean, North Americans and especially U.S. citizens are, are, are the bulk of our buyers. We do get some European investment and that's increased a lot. Even in the past 18 months, we had a huge increase in direct flights, Paris, Frankfurt, Spain, Italy, um, um, Holland has direct flights and we've, we've seen that increase in Europeans, but, but percentage wise, it's still vastly North American. We get some Canadian investors, but they tend to be more pocketed. And then geographically speaking, that's another really interesting element. When you look at a lot of, uh, touristic tropical destinations, usually in the States, it's really distributed. You know, Hawaii gets a lot of West coast people because it's an easier flight. The Caribbean, Bermuda gets a lot of East Coast people. Um, Mexico, you know, the, the, the Cabo San Lucas is Southern California, Arizona, driven in large part, and some Texas draw there. And the and the and and the Caribbean coast gets a different level because it's all about timing. And the cool thing about Costa Rica is, it's a it's a two and a half hour flight from South Florida. It's a three and a half to four hour flight from Atlanta. It's three and a half to four hours from Dallas. There's direct flights from all these places. We get a lot of diversity in terms of where our U.S. buyers are coming from. The Southeast is certainly a hotbed for investment here. Well, and I love that when our family was there, it was such a good combination of people. Uh, It was celebrities. It was locals. It was lots of people from Europe. It was just great because it was like a little melting pot of just different people there. I love That's a great point. I'll, I'll, I'll try not to bore you with it, but when I came to live in this tiny little town, one of my concerns, especially raising my kids, was are we going to be in this homogenized, you know, place where everything's the same? And it's amazing. You know, we'll have dinner parties at my house and I'm not talking about big dinner parties because as a realtor, you know, at the end of the day, you're done. Um, but in the small group of friends, we'll have, you know, three or four families over Israelis, French, Canadian, Italians, Americans, Canadians, Costa Ricans, and from all socioeconomic status. And that's one of the cool things you mentioned. It's one of these places where there are ultra exclusive resorts where you can be in a very privileged setting. Papagayo, the Discovery Beach Place, 
um, Hacienda Pinilla, Los Sueños, really amazing gated communities. A lot of people really attracted to places like Santa Teresa, Mauan Antonio, Dominical, because there's this really unique mix of local, local people and incredibly wealthy world travel people all kind of sharing the same space. So that I think that's part of the special sauce here. Right. So how is everybody paying for their real estate in Costa Rica? Like you walk me through a transaction, what they pay. It was- it's a dollar driven market. Um, one of the interesting things and probably the biggest, it, it's been a, it's been a huge plus and a huge negative depending on your perspective. It's basically been a cash market. So in my 27 years here, I've done one transaction that involved institutional finance. It's not because it doesn't exist here. There are banks that are starting to lend at our bank. Um, it makes it a lot harder, but um, so most of our transactions are cash transactions. We do a lot of creative seller financing where I'm selling a million dollar home with a half a million dollars down and the seller will carry back another half a million for one to five years at you know five to seven percent interest because that's still lower than the bank interest here. Um, that cash marketplace has, we don't get the, the peaks and valleys. We get some runs like that in the States, but because you don't get you know, funny money flowing in and driving prices up, we tend to be a little bit more steady in our growth. And and there's areas that have had exponential growth post COVID, but in general, there's a couple of things you know, holding costs in Costa Rica are incredibly low. Your property taxes here are a quarter of 1% of the registered value of the property. So a million dollar property is going to pay 2,500 bucks a year. And nobody, and there are no appraisers, you self-declare. Um, uh, insurance is about a quarter of 1% of the replacement value. So what you see is you have a lot of cash buyers that are putting equity into their properties here. And when the market soften a little bit, you don't see fire sales everywhere because things rent so well, they cash flow so well, and the cost of ownership is so low. Um, but the, the rest of the purchase, Fraz Andre, is pretty similar to what you see in the States. We'll do a letter of intent. Um, you sign a purchase and sale agreement. Usually you'll put down 5% potentially of the purchase price into an escrow account, fully refundable during a due diligence period, which can last between 30 to 60 days, depending on the complexity of the transaction, to do home inspections, topo reviews, title reviews, all that stuff. Once your due diligence is done, you make a formal presentation that you're satisfied with your due diligence and closings are usually seven to, to 15 days later. I'm curious. So do you have buyer's agents and listing agents or is it one agent or... How does that work? It, it can be. We don't have the same licensing and regulations you do in the state. So dual representation isn't forbidden here. About half of our transactions, my team and my agents are probably representing buy and sell side. So that's it's not uncommon. We'll have some U.S. buyers that come down and say, no, 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 split this up. And we'll assign a seller agent and buyer agent, even when the company, to create that kind of Chinese wall between the two. Um, but we're seeing more and more collaboration. And one of the things I'd encourage I think it's a hallmark of our firm. If you're speaking to any realtor here, they we don't have an MLS system in Costa Rica. So when you speak to a realtor, you should be making sure you're talking to someone that A, is working on a macro to micro level process. It is a very small country, but it's a very diverse country. And the lifestyle in Santa Teresa versus Jaco versus Tamarindo versus Mauan Antonio are night and day. And you want to work with somebody that's, that's going to take the time to tell you the pros and the cons, because there are cons with every place in the world, and find you the right place in Costa Rica for your goals, and then who will do the legwork, since there is no MLS, to not only tell you that I've got this great house, that will tell you, let me show you all of the homes my colleagues have. It's a really good litmus test of whether you're working with somebody who's out to try to sell you their property, or to work for your best interest, and that's it. It's a big mistake we see a lot of people make. So how do you all find out about properties? Just networking with one another? Or? There's more and more. Like my firm, we have listing coordinate. We have I have a full-time people that do nothing else but that reach out to other agencies, download photos, get their descriptions, and upload other agencies' listings to my site manually because there is no MLS, which if you're a real real estate agent, it's unfathomable. But literally, I have full-time staff that just calls every colleague in every area. Send me your listing. Why don't you start they, sister? That should be your it's, there there are people have tried it. There's some complexity because you need to have one official MLS and and there's steps towards that taking through realtor.com, through the Omni MLS. We're seeing that start to to breed, but we use a lot of I know in the States WhatsApp isn't that popular here. 
every local real estate community has WhatsApp groups. So you're you're constantly saying, I've got a buyer looking for this, which is what you would do into the MLS. I've got a buyer looking for this. On the off market too, but in a different way. But yeah, for sure. But it's important. And, and we just spend a lot of time and energy and resources making sure that our agents and our clients looking at our site can see as complete a picture as possible. Okay. So a couple last questions. One is what do people do? What is it for not, not necessarily, you know, I know that there's a job force that's doing construction and clean, like, right. this, but like, what is a highly educated, is a, do they own a company? Do they like, what do people do in general? Well, we're all realtors. <laughs> so, like, we're no, um, no, to be honest with you, that that's a bit of big revelation, you know, post COVID for any destination place. So the ability to do this, the ability to, to, to tape a podcast, engage with clients. We have a really good, reliable, high-speed internet all over Costa Rica. So the fact that we have a good fiber optic network here and now with Starlink, you could be in a boat in the middle of the ocean. And and so the work from home trend that drove um, a lot of people you know, during COVID out of big cities to destination living, you saw huge runs in, in Wyoming and Jackson Hole and Colorado and Arizona. We had the same benefit of that. And so there's a lot of professionals here that are either digital nomads or, and the ironic and digital nomads, you tend to think of a younger generation of people. It's amazing the amount of baby boomer people that are in consulting time. They, they've established themselves with their career and they're finding that they can do that here, enjoy a little bit of a legacy property, find a way to find that balance. And I think that's one of the kind of the magical elements here is you can be functional and you can be business oriented. But it's a place that forces you to slow down a little bit. And we see a lot of those people that are still very productive, but they feel like they need to get out of the United States into a place where they're reminded to go watch the sunset, to wake up and see the sunrise, to do something they love. And I love the family time there. All right. So top three favorite activities. What are they but in Costa Rica? Like, What do you and your family, top three things you just absolutely love to do? Top three things that everyone loves to do. I and mean, as a tourist, I mean, the canopy tour experience here is, you know, it, it might sound cliche. I've done it 50 times. And every time I hoot and holler like a little kid, it's an awesome experience. And and it's a really magical thing. Um, I live here in the in, in Nail Antonio. We have a very vibrant sport fishing community. And especially with clients from the Southeast, it's amazing you know, we have the best bill fishery in the world. This isn't a part of the massive tourism thing. It's not an average thing you do, but especially with clients from your neck of the woods, from the Southeast, North Carolina, South Carolina, Florida, we see sport fishing as a really popular activity. I'd also say that, you know, the wellness culture here has become a driving force. And you saw it, you know, there, this, I, I will love surfing into wellness surfing. If you don't know how to surf, does it matter? Come and learn how to surf here. It's fun. You know, the, the ocean's, 89 degrees all year round. It's magical. And getting in that ocean water is therapy. But the the the, the amount of people that have started to come here about, I'm going to take care of myself. And it links that Costa Rica Pura Vida with yoga, with healthy eating, with doing exercise and hiking. It is a driving force, uh, force in our tourism environment here and something that I think in some way, short form, everybody does. Even people that aren't coming to do yoga retreats, you see people in the morning eating fruit, and hiking and walking and being like, God, I'd never do this at all. Totally. Okay, we were there once and it was crab season. What in the world? <laughs> I feel like we got to tell the audience about that. Well, you know, we should probably be that it rains crabs in Costa Rica. <laughs> well, it's 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 with the, it's certain times of the year and it's certain lunar cycles that these beach crabs come out and it's like popcorn. I mean, like you you you'll be driving. I. My wife is, is, is an nature lover and she doesn't want, I'm like, honey, you have to advance over the crabs because there, it is a sea of them. And if you don't drive over some of them, sweetheart, we're never going to get home. Um, but one of the things that you'll find with the crab stuff, there's all this nature in here. We could do podcasts just on the, oh my God, nature moments that happen. And there's crab season. And then there's like, we have a cicada. We don't have the 40 year cicada. We have cicadas in some parts of Costa Rica every year where you're like, I'll be on a conference call. You're like, what is that noise? I'm like, yeah, those are the cicadas and the monkeys and the sloths and, and scarlet macaws. and the They're aggressive. They're like, how? Those things would get your teenagers out of bed. Well, and you're in Santa Teresa, so there you have what's called the howler monkey. And they make that really loud, amazing, scary noise. 
Um, in other parts of culture, we have the mono, we have cowler monkeys here, TT monkeys here, and the capuchin white face. A little shout out to don't feed the monkeys. One of the reasons they get more aggressive is that we all want to take a picture with that howler monkey eating a banana out of our hand. And there's a pretty big push here to try to keep people not feeding them because, like, in some of the bigger tourists, they, they'll come in, open the door to your house, come in and take the free dogs off the, because they're smart. And they're like, those are good chefs. I like those. <laughs> so there's a, there's a big movement to not feed the monkeys here and the iguanas and the wildlife. But, but the wildlife here is just amazing. Well, thank you so much for doing this today. It was awesome. I know yeah, that all of our friends family are going to so enjoy this and um, hopefully they'll be reaching out to you soon to schedule a visit. Well, Andre, I appreciate you talking about it. I hope they reach out to you. It's one of the magical things about being a part of Realm and being a realtor in this network is, you know, sometimes we don't realize that our friends and our local people that are doing real estate are part of a much bigger network. And, and, and you really offer people the keys to work with good, honest people that are going to take care of you um, because they know you. And so anybody that reaches out to you to come to Costa Rica, whether they're looking for a discovery trip or they're thinking about investing, you know, we're not a hardcore sales agency. We're guides to Costa Rica. So whether your questions are, we're thinking about it in 10 years or, oh my God, I got to ask something tomorrow. We're simply be honored to talk to anybody. If you enjoyed the conversation, you can follow to Costa Rica Real Talk in your favorite streaming platform and to Costa Rica Real Estate in all social media.